Hi, I'm Bill Kinney. This is video number 45 in a series on the foundations of arithmetic, algebra, and graphing with an emphasis on real-life interpretation and application. It's part four of a subseries on algebra, formulas, functions, and graphing with an emphasis on spreadsheet usage. I probably still won't get to spreadsheets yet. I, I hope to get to, to them soon, but I thought it would be best to continue with um, some examples by hand. And here's my main example for this one. You buy a new car for $25,000 and find that it depreciates to a value of $21,500 after one year. Estimate its value after three years and estimate its when its value will be $6,000. Okay, so this is about depreciation. Hopefully you know that when you buy a car, especially if it's a new car, it depreciates a lot when you, right when you drive it off the lot. Um, it might depreciate even more than this in one year, but uh, that's the number I picked for this. Um, so, you know, you, as far as you know, how you how you might find this out, you might find out that it depreciates to a value of twenty one thousand five hundred dollars after one year by looking it up online or in a book or talking to a dealer. Um, various ways you can do that. So we're pretending that we one year has gone by since we've bought this car and now we're trying to estimate its value after three years. An implicit assumption on the way this is stated is that three years after you bought it new. If I meant three years after the present, uh, which is one year after you bought it new, then I would have said after three more years or something like that. And another implicit assumption is when we estimate when its value will be $6,000 that again would mean after you bought it, though you could describe it from the present as well, but probably it would be best to describe it in terms of after we bought the car. There are some other hidden assumptions here. It might be best actually with this one to start off with a graph and then try to find a formula based on that graph, and I think I will do that. Which is the opposite of what I did with the previous one. And also for emphasis, I'm going to use variables other than x and y, mostly to emphasize, well, partially to emphasize that I can, and also to emphasize that it's usually good to pick variables that seem representative of, of the quantities that you are trying to, to model. In this case, t will be the independent variable. That'll be time. Time. What, make sure you put units, it would make the most sense to pick years. And that, that would be since you bought the car, but I won't write that. And for the vertical axis, the dependent variable will be the value of the vehicle. I guess I'll call that V for value, dollar value. All right, let's get some scales on the axes here. Here's my ruler to help me. You don't always have to use a ruler, but it's nice to when you can to try to make things as accurate as possible. I'll make one inch be the years. Well, maybe I better make half an inch. So half an inch is one year. One, two, three, four, five, six. The value starts up at $25,000. Probably I better use centimeters for my tick marks here. And then if I get to five of them, that'll be up to $25,000. This would be a 25,000 here. 20,000, 15,000, 10,000, 5,000. Another thing that I could have done is I could have picked units of value in thousands of dollars along the vertical axis, and I could have labeled that with a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That might have been a little nicer to do, but oh well, what's done is done. 
I know that when I buy the car, it's $25,000. So this point right here, whose coordinates are 0, 25,000, if I write that like this, is a point that's going to be on the graph. It's depreciating to $21,500 after one year, meaning when T is 1, V is 21,500. Do your best, right perhaps about there. That point is going to have coordinates 1, 21,500. Now what do I do? Well, what's typically done here, perhaps most, perhaps typically, maybe I shouldn't say definitely typically, is to connect these dots with a straight line. It's certainly the simplest thing to do. Like that. And to make the assumption that this is an accurate model for the value over time, for the value as a function of time. V is a function of T. Sometimes this notation, well, I should say almost always this notation is the kind of notation is used. The F here is not a number. It's a function name. F is the most common name for functions. V and T are numbers. Well, they're variables that represent numbers. When you see this kind of symbolism, where f represents a function, you say v equals f of t. v equals f of t. In a sense, this is just, I mean, what you can pretend is that f of t is a, just an expression that sort of is hiding some formula. And I'd like to find a formula for f of t that's going to tell me how to figure out the value based on the time. Now the graph can do it for us. For example, we can try to estimate the value after three years just from the graph. As you recall from some of the previous videos in this sub-series, this is a little bit dangerous because it's easy to not be as accurate as you perhaps should be in doing this, actually in knowing what the answer is going to be ahead of time, I actually know it's going to be about like this. When t is 3, what is v? In function notation, what is v when t is 3? I write that like this, v equals f of 3. And that's the way you say it, v equals f of 3, and that's not f times 3, it's f of 3, is just a symbolic way of representing the value of the car when t equals 3, substituting t equals 3 in there. It looks like it's a little bit less than 15,000. Um, I'm going to purposely put a wrong answer here. Maybe I'll guess by looking that it's 14,000. $800 or something like that. That's not accurate. I purposely made it wrong. Um, but it's an estimate you could make by looking at this picture. How would you get it more accurate? Well, that'll be the subject of the next video. We'll, we'll find a formula for f of t, and we'll use it to get a more accurate answer, based on this model at least, for this first uh, thing finding the value after three years, and also we'll try to answer the second one. But keep in mind that it even, it'll be, even though it'll be more accurate for this model, it doesn't necessarily mean it's more accurate in terms of the real-life car.